A dangerous situation, paracetamol overdose is often encountered in patients presenting to the A&E department. Paracetamol is a safe analgesic when used in therapeutic doses. However, in overdose it can cause severe hepatic necrosis. This results from overwhelming the body supply of reduced glutathione, a molecule which binds the highly reactive breakdown metabolite of paracetamol and acetyl B benzoquinonamine. The metabolite thus damages hepatocytes. N acetylcysteine, the remedy we use for paracetamol overdose, acts as a remedy because it provides cysteine for the synthesis of more glutathione and is thought to directly bind the rea reactive metabolite of paracetamol. The rate of absorption of paracetamol depends on the rate of gastric emptying, which is delayed by food, diamorphine, preferably propanethine, and enhanced by metaclopramide. So the recommended dose of paracetamol is 4 grams in 24 hours. Anything above this value is deemed as an overdose, hence a single overdose is defined as taking in more than 4 grams of paracetamol in a period less than 1 hour, whereas a staggered overdose is, a, is an overdose taken beyond an hour. So how do we manage a patient who presents to the emergency department with suspected paracetamol overdose. Firstly, an accurate history is essential to elucidate how many tablets and in what time frame they were ingested. This combined with the weight of the patient allows us to calculate the amount of milligrams ingested per kg, which influences management. Serum paracetamol concentration should be checked after four hours of uh, suspected ingestion. If we are uncertain in regards to the time of the overdose or the patient has taken a staggered overdose, then check the paracetamol levels immediately. Bloods should be sent off, particularly looking for hints of liver toxicity and also pancreatitis which is associated with paracetamol overdose. <coughs> Carry out an ABG and an ECG. So this is the important part. <coughs> so we have an example scenario here. Um, to calculate the amount of paracetamol ingested, we need to know how many tablets have been ingested and the weight of the patient. A single tablet holds 500 milligrams of paracetamol. Using an example of a patient who weighs 65 kg, we can calculate the amount of paracetamol ingested by multiplying 500 with the amount of tablets taken in. This is then divided by the weight in the weight in kg, which is 65. This gives us a paracetamol concentration of 150 milligrams per kilogram, which is toxic. Key points to remember when using this calculation. In large patients, if they exceed 110 kilograms, use 110 kilograms as the maximum weight during calculations. For pregnant patients, use their weight prior to pregnancy. Additionally, if the quantity ingested exceeds 150 mg per kg and is recent within one hour, consider administering activated charcoal 50 grams orally with the IV em emetic. If, overdose is, um, if the overdose threshold of beyond 75 mg per kg has been met, then start NAC. Administering NAC. When should this be done? We use a paracetamol overdose um, nomogram. If the plasma paracetamol concentration is above the treatment line, start NAC. NAC best protects the liver if given within 8 hours of paracetamol ingestion. The indications for administering NAC immediately, not waiting for the 4 hour levels of serum paracetamol concentration to come back are those who have significant overdose above 75 mg per kg. Patients who present with a staggered overdose and patients presenting in a coma and with ingestions more than 36 hours ago with presentations of jaundice or liver tenderness. How do we administer NAC in, in practice? This is a protocol for administering it. Beginning with the first infusion, which will last for an hour, we use 150 mg per kg of NAC diluted with 200 ml of 5% glucose. 
This is followed by a second infusion which will use 50 mg per kg diluted in 500 ml of 5% glucose lasting for 4 hours. The final infusion will see 100 mg per kg diluted with 1000 ml of 5% glucose giving over, given over 16 hours. So following this NAC administration it is important to reassess. Further NAC treatment is indicated if the liver function tests are abnormal or the INR is elevated above 1.3. Slight elevations in INR do occur with NAC therapy and that is normal. Uh, get psychiatry teams involved if the suspected overdose, overdose was the result of a suicide attempt. Since paracetamol overdose can result in acute liver failure, it is imperative to keep an eye out for any signs of acute or fulminant liver failure. These include encephalopathy, cerebral edema, jaundice, ascites, right upper quadrant tenderness, hypotension and tachycardia due to reduced systemic resistance. Lab results which suggest that liver failure include PT values of greater than 4 seconds or the INR being greater than 1.5. Acute liver failure is therefore confirmed if the patient has altered consciousness or clinical and or laboratory evidence of acute liver injury. If there is any indication of liver failure, administer NAC continuously and make contact with the liver unit who can assess the requirement for liver transplant. This assessment usually takes. Uh, this assessment is usually carried out using the King's College criteria, where liver transplantation should be considered if the arterial pH is less than 7.3 or or arterial lactate is greater than 3 millimoles or micromoles per liter after fluid resuscitation. Alternatively, if within 24 hours the creatinine of a patient exceeds 300 micromoles per liter and the PT exceeds 100 seconds with a grade 3 or grade 4 encephalopathy, then the patient needs a liver transplant. So here are, here are the references used in this presentation. Thank you again for watching. If you do have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you have any topics that you'd like us to cover, also leave it in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching.